was lovely. Thank you, Tony. And hello, I'm Annie Larkin. I'm the Associate Curator of Public Programs at the Ameren Museum. Welcome to our flute and storytelling performance with Tony Duncan. I'd like to extend a special thank you to our members, donors, and board members who not only make this type of programming possible, but Ameren's mission to promote the knowledge and understanding of the Native peoples of the Americas through research, education, conservation, and community engagement. I'd also like to thank Tony for enabling us to reach our community members during this time. If you'd like to become an Ameren member or donor, information regarding how to do so will be sent to all of our registrants along with the link of the recorded program within a few days. Um, to let you know, we do have some things going on at Ameren, including Ameren's Bird Pond Trail that is now open. It is a one mile round trip trail that will lead to a picturesque section of Ameren's property that has been closed to the public until now. It is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. It is free for our members and $5 per person for non-members. And then on Saturday, July 11th, Ameren will have an online lecture with Carrie Cannon. Cannon's talk, For the Love of Turquoise, will examine the long-standing tradition turquoise has amongst native cultures of the Southwest, discussing the special significance and profound meanings to the specific individual tribes. This talk will explore a long tradition of distinctive cultural styles, history, and transition of this wondrous stone. We'll be posting the registration links for this talk soon on our Facebook page and website, amron.org. All right, so Tony Duncan has performed for audiences worldwide, including performances at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, the National Museum of the American Indian, the Billboard Music Awards, The Tonight Show, and the White House. Duncan has great achievements in both music and dance, as a flute player, he is currently signed to the largest and oldest Native American music label, Canyon Records. As a hoop dancer, Tony Duncan is the best in the world, winning the title of world champion hoop dancer, astonishing five times. So welcome, Tony. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Yes, um, thank you for having me today. I'd like to introduce myself. Um, everyone. Tony Duncan My name is Tony Duncan. My Arikara name is Yellowbird Dancing. 
Um, I come from here, in, well, I'm based here in Mesa, Arizona with my family, my four children, my wife. Um, my father's people are of the San Carlos Apache Nation, um, just east of here, east of Mesa, um, heading down past Globe, Arizona. Um, and then my mother's people are from the three affiliated tribes of the Mandan, of the Hidatsa and Arikara Nations. My mother is originally from um, White Shield, North Dakota, Fort Berthel Indian Reservation, uh, right alongside the Missouri River. Um, every summertime, we always go back, going kind of back and forth from my, my uh, the, when school would let out, we would all head up in the van and go up into um, the Dakotas and hit a lot of different powwows. And so growing up um, as a young boy, I learned how to do different styles of dancing, um, these different types of dances known as powwow style, uh, competitive social dancing. Um, and my father taught me how to do a style of dancing that's known as the hoop dance. And actually I'd like to start off right now um, with the little dance piece that is called the dance of the painted warrior. And so I'm a flute player, but I'm also a hoop dancer, and for me, they go hand in hand. They help me to maintain that way of, of having balance within your life. So I, I always have to um, have both within my life. Um, and so for me, they're kind of like the elements of, of um, fire and the element of water. Um, that element of water provides um, a sense of healing. That's the, the element of water uh, provides a sense of calmness, you know, to your to your mind, to your body, to your soul, uh, which is for me is the traditional flute, the sound of water as it splashes on you, it heals you in that way. The small rain, the female rain that first comes and um, lends that those prayers of healing as well. Um, the the lightning and also all the, the the storms that bring forth as well new life, you know that that. Um, different forms of water, you know, for me, is different types of music that, that you have. There's very powerful sounds like that sound of the drum that also mirrors the sound of the, of the thunder as maybe the, the honor beats hit and then bring that energy, that energy, that feeling of pride, that feeling of uh, being proud of who you are, that feeling of um, dancing in strength and honor and, and healing. And so for me, the flute music reminds me of different forms of water, of healing. And then hand in hand with that comes the element of fire, which for me is the, the dancing portion of what I do. Um, the element of fire represents the quick movements, always, always um, moving, constantly moving with the dance. Once the drum starts and then you're just always constantly moving, constantly keeping a rhythm, even maybe with your head, Keeping, if you're a fancy dancer, your rocker moving like this way here. If you're a grass dancer, maybe moving your plumes this way. If you're a woman's jingle dress style, keeping all those jingles, creating the beautiful sounds of healing. Uh, whatever it is in that way of, of dancing, of movement, um, that's the element of fire, the flicker of the flame. It's always constant. And it also brings forth healing in the same way as well. That fire is something that we cannot live without. Um, the, the light of the sun that brings that warmth as well and also promotes growth. And so um, those are the two elements that I always um, like to have within, I guess you would call it even a performance. And um, uh, that's what I'd like to share with you today. And I, I feel most comfortable um, with my regalia. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that as well because a lot of people um, have different questions um, about what we wear as Native peoples. There's many different stories that goes within what we wear as well. Um, oftentimes, the designs that we have, they're passed down from different families. Um, many times, the different regalia, the different beadwork, they tell stories within itself as well. Um, different designs coming from different peoples, nations, um, different, even different tailored cuts of your regalia, what you wear you can tell that this person might be from this tribe or even from this certain clan. And so everything that we wear tells a story and also has so much of that cultural identity um, tied within it. And we wrap those, those um, good feelings, good energy of, of our relatives 
on our bodies as we dance and it just helps us to um, even give that a little bit more um, into each step and so I got all of my regalia on here I'm feeling good and um, I'm gonna share with you this opening number here that is called the dance of the painted warrior um, and then I'm gonna also be sharing uh, a style of dance that I'm gonna be inviting um, my daughter to join me with as well uh, but I'm going to start off here with the dance of the painted warrior and I have my bells here I'll be placing these bells on my legs here and um, help me keep that rhythm and timing as well so um, I have I'm only going to be using four hoops these four hoops so oh, let me get close to the camera here these four hoops each one represents um, a direction. Each one represents a doorway. And so um, I guess you, what you might think of when you think of a direction maybe is a map or so. Um, and but from what I was told growing up was uh, each direction is a doorway. And so it represents a doorway throughout life. And so beginning from the east, we come into this world and we go through each doorway as we move within our life. And each doorway that we go through, we, we gain a responsibility, whether it be becoming a father, maybe to the Western doorway, um, and then to the North, whether it become um, a grandfather, becoming an elder, someone to pass down knowledge to the next generation. And so each direction, each doorway that we dance towards, uh, we, we show that honor and that respect to each doorway, to each direction, um, because within each doorway also um, is our relatives. And so when I first dance to the east, I'll be dancing for my children. Um, I have four children, and in this time of quarantine, um, we've been really trying to um, maintain some um, type of um, good medicine around them. Um, I know they're missing their friends. They're missing um, having contact with their grandparents, um, with the rest of our, our relatives as well. And so um, we've been trying to bring that good feeling, that good energy that is usually always around our families. Um, but we've been trying to bring that through dancing. And so we've been doing a lot of dancing um, here in the living room. We've been doing dancing here and there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go right into this. So I hope you enjoy this one here. The, Dance of the Painted Warrior is the music you'll be hearing. Thank you. 
you enjoyed that. That was my dad and he was doing who tents and and the flu. And I really liked it. Remember to remember it's me Thomas and just tell us if you liked it because I want to know if you guys liked it because I loved it. Next up is me because um because um it's me because um I'm doing beautiful, but this is my new one. I practiced it yesterday. My mom helped me, and I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna pray for you guys and hope that everybody's all right and pray that nobody gets the sickness. And I did this all by myself, and I thought of it. And then my mom just helped me. She was like, "Well, let's do it." So, so that I'm gonna do beautiful. It's a, it's a new one. All right, thank you, Thomas. Get this situated here. Oops. What did I do? Okay, here we go. Now, what um, Thomas was alluding to there was this dance here, or this, it's not exactly a dance, it's actually um, movements that Natanis has created with the help of uh, my wife, Violet. And come here, Natanis. This is little Natanis, and um, her traditional name is Thunderbird Woman. And um, she was given this name um, when she was very, very young. And so, I'm very proud of her and all of the um, brave things that she does. She does a lot of these dances and, and um, she really asked to be a part of um, the performances because she watches on YouTube different dancers. Um, one of her heroes is um, 
Maria Tallchief and the legacy that she has left for indigenous um, dancers, the movements of expression is very important and each movement tells a story. And so we also like to say, um, give a shout out and say thank you and show that honor and appreciation to uh, my mother-in-law, Rosa John, um, for teaching the different movements as well, choreography, and um, as well as um, Hulan and Santi and many different um, indigenous um, artists that really involved the, the movement and the, the, the beautiful way um, and the good medicine that it brings. And so this is little Natanis, and she's going to be sharing with you her movements that she calls beautiful. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Natanis. Okay. All right. Thank you, Natanis. And the movements that she shared there, a lot of those movements, um, they mean, they have different meanings to them. Um, some of the movements that she does that she calls shake the earth, these different movements that she does here and some of the movements that she does bringing forth life to mother earth in this way. And so she tells her, her stories through her movements and I'm very proud of her. Um, I'd like to share with you um, another flute 
talking about the instrument that I have here, this one here, I can kind of get it close here. This flute is actually um, the one I just played. It's also the flute that I played in the beginning. Um, this one was made by one of my, my favorite, favorite flute makers um, because I grew up with him since I was a, a young boy. Um, I was always playing his flutes. Um, he's the one that really helped teach my father as well, um, flute making in that way with River King. And his name is Paul Thompson. And so Paul Thompson, he's from the Navajo Nation and he's gifted me many flutes. And um, this flute here is one that he gifted me using the um, cedar. But he usually makes River King flutes. And um, I'd like to share with you um, another, another song here. I have um, a variety of flutes and one that's really unique is this double droned flute. It has um, two flutes here, also made from cedar. Uh, but this one here has quite the unique sound. Um, it has one chamber that plays um, um, like a drone, a sound, a sound that's, that keeps key. Um, and then the uh, secondary chamber um, can go up and down that scale, the pentatonic scale. Um, and so it's a very unique flute here. And so this one here was made by um, a good friend of mine as well, also from the Navajo Nation. He's from uh, Tuba City. And his name is um, Lavar. Lavar Thompson. He's a good buddy of mine and he also created many flutes for me and this one here he gifted to me at the Red Mountain Eagle powwow um, over in Scottsdale on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community in November they have a awesome celebration there and um, he gifted this one to me at that event so I hope you enjoyed the song here using the double chamber flute Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Um, that song there, um, using the double chamber flute, it's probably one of my favorite favorite flutes to play. And um, I actually started playing that flute not too long ago um, with the double chamber flute. Um, but a good friend of me actually helped me to get used to playing the that style of flute, Lowry Begay. So he's a great flute player as well. So I want to give a shout out to Lowry for helping me out, um, getting used to the different dual chamber style of flute playing. Um, now I'd like to talk a little bit about what I'm wearing here with my regalia. Um, everything that I'm wearing here was made by um, a really good friend of mine, uh, Lisa Little Iron. She's from um, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, um, Oglala Lakota Nation, and she does beautiful, phenomenal work. And um, this, uh, actually, just the color, even the color of this regalia, the color that I'm wearing, um, it represents um, the blue color of a of a stone that was given to me when I was um, given a protection stone on Apache Way, a small turquoise. Uh, whether it be a little bit of more of a blue, a little bit more of a green, um, a turquoise stone that's given to you. Um, and on that stone, it has a small feather, and it's your protection way, your protection stone. And so I wanted to have the same color of um, that stone because it always brings me good feelings, good energy, uh, happiness. Um, that's, that's, that stone brings good feelings and chases anything bad away. Um, and so... I use that same color to invoke the same feeling um, that I want to have around me when I'm dancing. And so that feeling of blessings, that feeling of happiness, um, it, it's this color here. And so you can see the main color is, is um, blue and that's the, the stone that I, or that's the color from that stone. And, and then um, the designs here are the elk. And so you can see there's two elk here on each side and the elk carries that medicine from the flute players it carries that love medicine it also carries you know that that um that strong medicine of healing i was also told that the flute holds that medicine of healing and we still use that today in a way of calming ourselves and finding that centering within our being finding that inner balance through music as a way of calming and um, creating a good space um, for, uh, for us to continue our life in a good way and to promote healthy living. And so the elk here on my, on my um, vest represents that medicine of the flute. And then, of course, um, I have what I mentioned with dancing is the medicine of the, of the fire, the quick medicine, the quick energy, the, the, the um, powerful of the flickering flame. And that's what I have here. It's the little fire, fire designs on here. And so those are the, the little bit about what my regalia means here. And I'd like to um, share this hoop dance here with you really quick. Um, and then I'll take um, just a couple of questions maybe to, to round this off here today. But I'm going to go into this hoop dance here and um, hope you enjoy. Um, this style of dancing was taught to me by my father um, and it originates from the Taos Pueblo people from New Mexico, a dance of healing. Thank <laughs> you. 
have a few that were here. Uh, one of our guests would like to know when you'll be in the White Mountains next. Um, let's see. I don't know. My dad will talk. <laughs> Up into the White Mountains. I know, um, well, I think this, this season, of course, uh, many of the festivals aren't happening, but Usually, every every um, late, I believe it's like um, not sure the exact time, but they have the White Mountain um, Cultural Night, and whether it be my family um, or my parents, um, Yellowbird dancers, uh, we usually do a lot of dancing over there in the White Mountains for the fair, for the, the, the cultural fair that they have going on. 
Um, and then they have a couple different events from time to time in Pine Top and, and such. But um, if you go to my Facebook, that's kind of where everything is posted. Um, and then if you go to my website, you can also see different events posted. And so my website is TonyDuncanProductions.com. And my Facebook is Tony Duncan Music and Dance on Facebook. So um, you check out that. Um, we'll probably have a lot of this stuff set up, but you know, maybe 2021, I think is when everything is gonna kind of start rolling again. So any, any other questions? There are a few more. Um, one for you and Natanis. Um, the, uh, the viewer would like to know if that was the, um, it, the creation legend that she was depicting. Oh, I want to talk about what you were doing. Good. I was doing beautiful, and I did an eagle, and I did a bear, and I did a little ant, and then I gave them, I gave them some food and trim sign, and I gave, and I prayed for them to stay safe and don't get the sickness. Oh, thank you. That's so special. We really appreciate that. Um, thank you receiving questions regarding your hobbies, Tony. Folks would like to know about that. Oh. This, um, this one here is made from, I'll try to just go real, really quick so it gets the questions in, but it's, it's made from a uh, porcupine hair. And I always like to acknowledge the maker and who does the beadwork and everything. They're all friends of our families, um, good friends and so this one here was done by a gentleman by the name of Nathan Largo. And he is just really, really well known in making these um, roaches, a porcupine hair. And so this is the guard hair from a porcupine. And so, and then the, the colors are from the white-tailed deer. And they use the white-tailed deer and they dye different colors to match the dancer's regalia. And if you look very closely, see how good the camera can get but um, you can see that they're tied on really small, small bundles at a time. Very, very tedious work. And then there's, you can see how many of the rows of them there are. And so it's the, there's maybe a handful of people that are really, really great at uh, making these porcupine head roaches. And uh, there's a little bit more here, but uh, I'll just, I uh, mentioned um, Nathan Largo and awesome, awesome artist, porcupine hair with the, the guard hair from a, a, a porcupine guard hair and then the tail of a white-tailed deer. That is absolutely incredible. Wow. Thank you. Uh, Any other question here? Another guest would like to know if you have a scheduled practice routine and how long does it take you to master a new dance? Oh, okay. Well, I guess it depends. Um, I don't know if I ever feel like a master anything. Um, always practicing. It's just constantly practicing because with hoop dancing, um, now I find that I, I wanted to maybe do some different types of designs that are more intricate designs. But whether when I was younger, maybe it's because stamina, uh, where I wanted to go really, really fast paced and do minimal ho hoops. Um, and so it's always constantly changing. So. With hoop dancing, I feel like I'm still creating different designs. Still, there's many designs that I haven't even found yet that I'm still kind of searching for. And then I'm also a men's fancy war dancer, and I really want to get more back into that. That's actually what I started dancing at when I was very, very young. Um, I started to dance that, and then as a teen, I started to dance it. And then I basically put everything down and went straight to hoop dancing and only hoop dancing because that was just really, really fell in love with hoop dancing. But now as a father, I'm kind of adding different styles to my re to my dancing. Um, but yeah, it's just this constant. Um, and the practice regiment is just kind of when you can get it in. If there's something, sometime maybe I'll just bring a hoop, start spinning it while I'm watching TV or so with the kids. And the kids will grab hoops too, and maybe they'll join me or so. Maybe we'll be bring hoops to the park as long as with a football, a baseball, a fishing rod, and then the hoops. And then maybe we'll get to the hoop or maybe we won't. And next time we'll get a football. Sometimes we go back and forth. So it's not as, in a strict regimen as, as much. When I was growing up, I actually I had more of a regiment when I was growing up. But um, for my children, we just kind of jump into it um, as, as time permits and having fun with hoop dancing too. 
The next question is regarding the history of hoop dancing. Uh, they would like to know what the history of hoop uh, dances uh, is, as well as what was used uh, for hoops uh, prior to uh, the hoops used today. Okay, yeah, um, well, hoop dancing, as I was told, um, it comes to us from the Taos Pueblo people uh, from New Mexico. And a little bit of the form of that, the style that I hoop dance with, which is the, the modern style of hoop dancing, it comes, they say, from a gentleman who was really instrumental, um, a huge um, inspiration to me and many hoop dancers was uh, Tony White Cloud. Um, and you can go on to Google and put Tony White Cloud and you'll see a lot of cool information about hoop dancing uh, if you just put his name. And if you want to know early, the early parts of hoop dancing, you can look up Tony White Cloud. But he was very instrumental um, in bringing that style of dance to what we see right now, the modern form of hoop dancing, creating designs, formations, honoring different beings, uh, the four-legged, honoring the, those that swim in the water, honoring those that fly different types of beings that we say thank you to, to honoring the plant people with the design up here, honoring Itzacho, the eagle, who's a messenger to the creator, and celebrating all of life, saying thank you in, in a form of dance. Um, and But prior to that, I know the dance was done as a ceremonial way, um, and I don't have exact uh, information um, to actually share that style, that form of it, but the form that I do um, is the more of the social competitive style of modern day hoop dance. Um, and I know we hold, uh, we owe a lot to Tony White Cloud uh, for really bringing that to the forefront um, and sharing that. And now it's been passed down and travel all across the Turtle Island, all across the United States and into Canada. Um, but yeah, from, the, from a form of healing, it still maintains that way of, of healing ways. Um, and if you enjoyed that dance, then if that brought you happiness, then that's how this dance is still a form of healing. And the next question, they would like to know if your regalia is beaded or embroidered. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's all beaded. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Lisa Little Iron, she's the one that does my regalia here. Oh, let me show you my headband. I'll get that close. So yeah, this is how the beads are. And they, they're pretty, starts from the outside and then it goes the rows all around and then the border is done in beads as well too. So that's my, my headband and then these are the cuffs. They're done like, I don't know how many rows they are, but it's definitely a whole lot of work. And um, a lot of love goes into bead work because you um, it takes a lot of time and um, the energy that goes into bead work not just the physical energy, but the spiritual and the, um, that love that goes into the beadwork. It's, it's a means a lot um, to get beadworks as well. So when I was very young, um, I always wanted to have a regalia that had beadwork with it. And so um, I'm very happy and I always thank uh, Lisa Little Iron for putting that time and effort into my regalia. And yeah, it's, everything is uh, beaded. And we'll do one more question. They've asked, what age did you start learning how to hoop dance? Um, I started to hoop dance when I was five. I started to hoop dance when I was five. Um, my dad was a hoop dancer. Um, my dad, he used to hoop dance in his college days. Um, he was taught by um, a, a champion hoop dancer um, by the name of Terry Godell. And Terry Godell, taught my father and then my father taught me uh, when I was about five and he also taught all of my brothers who also hoop dance. Uh, well, the majority of my brothers hoop dance. My, my older brother um, hoop dances from time to time as well. Um, and then my younger brother who's actually um, a, a museum, um, museum director um, over at the, the Po uh, Cultural Center in uh, New Mexico. And he used to hoop dance. Uh, he still knows, how, he knows the moves if he dusts off his hoops. Um, but then my younger brothers, they all are really avid hoop dancers, much faster than me now. <laughs> and uh, my brother Talon and my brother Kevin are just phenomenal hoop dancers, as well as my brother Sky. Uh, but Sky, he lives in um, 
New Mexico now as well, but um, he's a really good hoop dancer. And so it's been, it's been within our family now. Now it's going to the next generation of dancers. So now my son, Naichi, he's a hoop dancer, as well as my nephew, RJ, and my nephew, um, Tizoc, hoop dancers. And my nephew, uh, Strider, and then also my nephews, um, Jacob, and uh, my nephew, Preston. And so they're all going to be getting into hoop dancing as well, a little bit more um, throughout the line. So, yep, it's a hoop dance family, and it, it means so much. It tells a, a great story um, honoring that circle of life and how we should all have respect for every human being and how we should give that respect because it comes back around the same way as a circle, especially in the times that we're living in right now. Um, it's very simple, but it seems to be a very trying um, teaching of having respect and showing respect and appreciation and treating somebody out there that you maybe don't even know, a stranger, treating them the same way you would treat your brother, treating them the same way you would treat your own mother or your father. And so it's a dance that teaches that way of honoring a great circle, living with balance and respect and honor in our life. Well, Tony, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your time and talent with our audience today. Your presentation is something I think that we've all needed as far as healing and calm. And um, it was absolutely stunning. And Natanis, um, I, I can tell you she stole the show in the comments. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. Lots of love and thanks awesome. are being sent to her. And I would like to ask our audience if you would like to thank Tony and support him. Uh, we do have some links, um, not only in our Facebook comments, but also in the Q&A section of our Zoom area uh, to send him a donation for his performance at Venmo at Tony, Production, Tony Duncan Productions. And then you can also visit his website to purchase his CD uh, at uh, tonyproductions.com and you can also make a donation via paypal at nativetd.hotmail.com this information will also be sent to you with a recording of the performance so if you don't happen to get it right off um, you will be able to find that info there but yeah definitely visit his website to find his fantastic music all right awesome just showing this really quick oh yes and this violence is... books this is Violet's book. My wife, Violet, she is the one that keeps everything rolling within our family smoothly. And so um, she's the one the behind the scenes right now. She set all this up. And, but um, this is her book called Let's Hoop Dance. She's also a self-published children's book author and carrying on the, the, the ways of teaching through storytelling. Her father is a traditional storyteller. And so now she's maintaining the same way through children's books. And so this is the latest one here called I Am Native. I am native here that documents and follows a little bit of the day in the life of um, our family as we live within both worlds. It shows that we do beadwork here, and, but then we also still love to do paintings as well. And so we live in two worlds with our cradle boards, Apache cradle board that I was raised in. And then my daughter still plays with their dollies as well. And so it's a book that shows how we still maintain this way of life ever evolving, vibrant people, and we're not just in the past. And so um, thank you very much to everybody. And I want to thank Natanis here, Natanis, little Thunderbird woman here. And I want to say thank you to um, everybody that tuned in here. Um, thank you very much for having us. And um, it's been an honor. We love thank you. you. Um, Remember to stay safe. <laughs> Thank you. We love you too. Thank you all. And thank, thanks to everyone for joining us. And we hope to see you at our next online uh, presentation on July 11th. Take care, everyone.